Well, um, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I hope that you can hear me. I hope that you can see me. Um, I hope that yeah, I can see that there are quite a few people already here. There may be other people that join us as the time goes on, but hopefully it won't disturb anybody that's watching at home already. Um, thank you so much for joining us this evening. Um, this evening it is me and Mr. Tatum, the Deputy Head, and I'll introduce him shortly. Uh, we will be doing a socially distance swap halfway through uh, the presentation. But we wanted to have this opportunity to talk to you so that you were aware of the same information you would have had had you been at the New Parents Information Evening in person that we would have run around this time, and that you know what to expect next in terms of transition. So the plan for this evening is to give you those pieces of information that you will need and to help you understand that process and what we're hoping to do under these conditions so that you know kind of what the next steps will be, regardless of what happens. So I'd like to start this evening uh, with a prayer, and if you're happy to join with me, please do so. In the name of the Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Dear Lord, help us in these challenging times to come together as a community. Though we may not be present in the same room together, help us to work as one to support the children and families who will be joining St Benedict's this year. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. So, sorry, I stood in front of the prayer while I was saying, which probably didn't help. Um, I want to start by talking about what the school is trying to do and where our starting position is. So our mission statement as a school is to develop in wisdom, compassion and resilience through prayer and work. And our objective, what we're trying to do as a school, is to build those, those skills and those um, abilities within our students through approaching them in a particularly Catholic way and in a, in a particular way that we think underpins the ethos and the values of what we do as a school. 
So it is about ultimately, and as this, this section of scripture tells us, I have come so that they may have life and have it to the full. It is about achieving potential. And so we want all the young people who come to us in September to be able to achieve their potential, to do the things with their lives that they want to do, to go out and make the world a better place. And that fundamentally is what we're about as a school. So when students come to us in September, we are looking to support them in that journey so that they will achieve their potential and they'll be able to do all the things that they want to do with their lives. So in terms of where we start as a school and where students come into us, it is about that ethos and it is about being ready to learn. And those things we see in lots of different areas. It's in things like the uniform and being ready to take part and be part of that community. It's in about attendance and punctuality, making sure that students are ready to learn in the way that we would want them to be, and actually having the things that they need in order to be engaged and to ask for help if they need it, and that's really important. As a community, we have lots of things that will support students when they join us. And so one of the things that we'll be talking about when students come to us, or so when we find a way to do the transition meetings, what we'll be doing is we'll be talking about how you form part of that wider community. So not only are students in form groups and year groups and get to know students of a similar um, at the same ages and doing similar subjects. What we also have is we have schoolhouses, a bit like Hogwarts, but slightly different. And when what we will do is we will allocate students to houses, and it helps to create community within the community. And the four houses are Caritas, which is yellow, Patientia, which is blue, Industria, which is white, and Humanitas, which is red. Now, the reason I mention this now is because when we're talking about school uniform, the year sevens, when they join us, buy a tie that has that colour on it. So it's green and whichever house colour they're in. And what we'll do over the next uh, few weeks when we're doing this transition process is we'll allocate students to a house and we will then tell them so that they have the right tie with us when they start in September. It's never a big problem if it's gone wrong and we can always swap things around, but often students like to know which house they're going to be in and have a particular fondness for each one. We are, as a school, fundamentally, so we're about achieve, students achieving their potential. We're about students being able to do the things that they want to do and grow into the person they want to be. And we know that fundamental to that is their being safe and being able to know where to go if they need help and if they need support. And we take safeguarding at our school very seriously. And so we make sure all the way through the transition process and when students start in, this, in year seven, they know who they can turn to for help and they know where that help is. And we as a school are there to support students with anything that they that they bring to our attention or that we spot that we think needs our help. And so our safeguarding team will be available for students at all times that we can access that. And between us as a group, we always make sure that the school is, is pointing information to these, to these people so that we can deal with situations. We think that's hugely important. And so as a school, we take that very seriously. We take very seriously that, that ambition to achieve potential, that ethos of being part of a community, being able to connect together as a group of students, but also making sure that students are safe when they come to us and safe in everything they're doing in school and through school. So in terms of the transition process and what we're doing at the moment and how we're working with students or trying to work with students under these, um, these new situations. So we've got the parents' information evening. What we have now from all of the primary schools is we have data um, to support that transition process. Now, usually what we will be doing now is we will be scheduling to come out in person, um, a member of the senior team, to meet the young people in their schools and talk to them about their, their transition to secondary school, what they're hoping to get out of St Benedict's, what they want, any concerns they have, and to help them with that process by meeting them face to face. Now, it doesn't look as if we're going to be able to do those face-to-face -face meetings because although we know some year six students will be returning to school, we know there's going to be quite a mixed picture there and how we would manage that in terms of social distancing might be a bit of a problem. So what we're going to look to do is to devise a different way of doing that, either through using Skype in school or a similar, um, a similar video conferencing in school to talk to students when they're in school or when they're at home. But again, in terms of safeguarding, we need to make sure that's absolutely safe. Or we'll do that through making phone calls. But parents are we fundamentally involved in that process and we'll make sure that you're absolutely aware of how we're having those conversations and talking to young people. Because it's an opportunity for them to ask us questions and an opportunity for us to get to know them, to make sure that we place them with, with the tutor that will suit them the best and the house that's going to work with them the best and the right teaching groups and all those sorts of things. So it's really important that we have that transition. And it's also really important, I think, that students have that opportunity to talk to us about what their concerns are and to ask the questions that they might have. So we will have that process 
and we will be in touch with you about how we will get in touch with your child and talk to them before we meet them. In addition to the data that's already been submitted, we have now additional data about SCND and pastoral transition information, and we are liaising with primary schools again to pick up what we can do to support that. So all that process is still in place. That's completely in line with our normal timescales. We have the information, and we're able to work with that. As I put in my letter, some parents and some students have been concerned about the absence of the SATS data. Actually, that's a small component of the information we would normally use anyway, and so it's not going to make a huge difference to how we group students, how we um, support students, and so we don't want any students to worry about that. We will give them the opportunity to talk about their concerns in that regard. Um, what we'll then do, and what we would normally do, is we'll have an opportunity to meet the tutor in July. Now, we would hope that we will have some way of you as parents and as students meeting the form tutors for year seven before students start in September, but obviously all of this is dependent on the plans for schools into July, and across the summer and into September. But we will, our expectation is that we will carry on with that process. So although we may not be able to do the face-to-face -face meetings in primary schools that we would normally do, and we'll have to adapt that slightly, we are hoping that we will be able to get the rest of the process back on track. And we will look at how we do that end of transition. Now usually, we would have students come and join us for the last few days of the summer term, and they would be with us, um, be, be with us rather than their primary, so they know what to expect. That depends absolutely on what's happening in primary schools at that point. Not all students may want to do that. There's a lot still to happen there, but we are hoping that we will still, we are expecting that we will still be able to do some face-to-face -face transition and some face-to-face -face getting the students up to the school to have a look around to make sure they feel comfortable before September. So that, that will be something we're factoring in, and obviously we are constrained by what's going on globally um, as, how, as to how we do that, but we will adapt and we will make sure the students have that opportunity. Lots of students ask questions about the school day, and um, I think it's useful for students to have an idea of how that will work for them. So when students come up to us in secondary school, we have a five period day, each of our lessons is an hour long, and we have an hour for lunch. And so students, when they come to us, get used to this new routine, and for many of you, it will be something that you're very familiar with. I know lots of primary schools have timetables where you have a lesson for a certain amount of time and then move on. For some people, it may not be such a familiar format, but we make sure that students know what to expect and they have that timetable that shows them which room they go to and they follow these timings of the day. And so we make sure on those transition days and when we meet students in September that they have a clear understanding of what happens when the bell, when the bell goes and where they go and what their timetable is. You might notice, the more, more eagle-eyed that in between some of the lessons, there is a five-minute break. That is moving time. So when the bell goes at the end of period two, we make sure that there is enough time to move from the period two lesson to the period three lesson so that the students are there ready to learn at the start of that lesson. So it is more moving around than students will have been used to at primary school, which is why we think it's really important that they have that opportunity to get to know the building and to find their way around a little bit before they start with us in September. But nevertheless, it's a relatively small site. We know where we're going and, and students, it's quite easy once they get here to know where to go next. But, and there's always plenty of people on hand to help. And I think for some students, this anxiety around the school day and how it will be different, um, some students worry about that, but actually it, it's quite a straightforward day. You know, a nice long lunch break, so there's plenty of time to get your lunch, to talk to your friends, to spend time kind of having a bit of downtime before you go to your lessons in the afternoon. So we think it's important that students know that that's what their day will look like. And I know that, like my own children, your, dis your days currently will not look like this. <laughs> but come September, we are hoping that we will go back to having normal school days and having students in school as we would expect. In terms of how you will get here, um, lots of our students um, come by bus, lots of our students come by bike, lots of our students come by foot, um, and some students come by car. We would ask when things are back to normal and people are dropping students off that they're not dropped immediately outside the school and certainly not in the bus phase because that causes a huge amount of traffic disruption and it can be really dangerous. So some students are dropped off nearby and lots of our students come from lots of different directions. Our students come from a very wide geographic area, so there are lots of different ways that our students arrive with us. If you are looking at, your, at coming by bus, there is a dedicated part on the Suffolk County Council website around transport. Now, you may have used that before with transport for primaries, or you might not have done, but it's definitely worth looking at that and finding out what the transport routes are um, for buses if you think that a bus is going to be the way that your child comes to school in September. Lots of people have asked already about uniform. 
Um, our uniform is available. So normally on the New Parents Evening, we would have had our uniform supplier here and you would have been able to meet them and look at some of the sizings for the school uniform before you placed your order. Obviously, we can't look at the sizings for the school uniform now, but it is still available to order online. So the online bookings, the online system, you can be found through our school website and you can go on and you can buy the school uniform the same amount wearing the, the old school tie and not the house tie. And you can purchase the uniform through that. And our suppliers, we contacted them, they know that this that, that, that we'll be directing parents in this direction. If you want to wait slightly longer, that's absolutely fine. Um, until you know, obviously, children do grow quite quickly at this particular time, especially if you feed them. And um, hopefully, <laughs> so, um, and hopefully, it gives you a chance to kind of have a think about what uniform you're going to want to buy, what week that is expected, and how you're going to get hold of that in time in September. Um, because we are very much anticipating that we will all be back here in September. So please don't be concerned about the availability of uniform. If you go on and look at the supplier, you can order direct. We have two different suppliers, one for the main school uniform and one for the PE uniform, and they're both on there. So if you go onto the website, you'll be able to find that information there. Lots of students also ask about what else they can do other than just their normal school lessons, and there are loads and loads of clubs. And this is um, some of the clubs that were running for the lower school um, in previous um, in previous term. There are loads of different things that go on, lots of different activities. And we compile that information together quite early on in September so students know what's on offer and what they can sign up to and do. So there's lots of different things. So students who have a particular interest, if there isn't a club for that, we can look at that and see whether or not that's something that we can set up and support as well. And that's the beauty of having the hour for lunch break, is that there are lots of different things that students can get involved with, with and still have time to eat their lunch. So I think I've talked far too quickly and witted on endlessly. So I'm going to hand over to Mr Tatum, who will talk more, more clearly and uh, less speedily. Um, good evening ladies and gentlemen. I uh, hope you are all uh, safe and well at home. Um, as uh, Miss Senior just said, my name is Mr Tatum. Um, I'm the Deputy Head Teacher here at St Benedict's. Um, and I'm going to take you through uh, a couple of the other points um, about school that you'll find hopefully interesting um, as you begin in Year 7. Um, the first thing uh, that I'll talk about is the use of data and, and how um, we will, as a school, let you know, uh, parents and students, how you're doing, how, how you're getting on with all the subjects that you are going to study here at St Benedict's um, and what that process looks like. So there is further more detailed guidance uh, available on our website, um, but when students arrive um, at St Benedict's, we have um, the Key Stage 2 data, which we, um, we know um, will be slightly different this year, um, but we have information from uh, the primary schools uh, that they will hand over to us before uh, you, you start um, to children or, um, and then we also have other um, ways of um, assessing students um, to, to get them set up as quickly as possible. Um, our, our aim is to make that transition and start of year seven as smooth as possible. Um, students will receive a, a, um, a target grade um, for the end of the year that they are to work towards um, by the end of year seven. Now, those target grades are aspirational. Um, you are very unlikely students um, to hit all of your target grades all of the time. Um, but the idea is that they are something that you strive for. And what they're, what, how they're calculated is by looking at what similar students to you have done in the past in the top 20 or 10 percent of the time so we're, we're expecting you to work work hard um, to, to achieve those targets um, but they are they are aspirational and um, so that's that's something to aim for at the once once you arrive in each for each of the subjects when we are teaching you and you are, are learning throughout the year we will assess you so each half term here at St Benedict's um, subjects will assess each student twice during that half term. Um, we will regularly then report to you parents um, on how your son or daughter is doing um, in a more formal way in, in that you will receive uh, a, an assessment point report. Um, but equally, that, that information can be found quite easily in students' exercise books. So students, you will find out how you're doing on a regular basis here, um, what the things are that you need to improve on, how to improve on them. Um, but parents, we will regularly keep you informed and we will send home um, what these target grades for each of the subjects are. We will send home how students are getting on in each of the subjects with a current 
uh, working grade. Um, we will also send home information on how your son or daughter is getting on in class. So what is their behavior like? Um, what's their effort like? Have they been um, punctual with their homework? Um, and that is to develop that relationship between school and home to make sure that we are supporting um, the year sevens as much as we can do to achieve that success. When you arrive um, in year seven, um, it will be very different to how uh, the, the, the time that you've experienced at primary school. Uh, so no longer will you be in one single class and then that will be it. So there are a variety of subjects that you, you will study here at St. Benedict's. And it is, um, for some subjects, you will have a, a similar class. Um, so it might be that in history and geography, you have a similar class. Um, but you will also be in different different classes. And, and our job, using that information that we, we get from primary schools over uh, the course of the summer, is to set you up um, to be in the right class and, and form um, when you begin. Um, the subjects that are taught here at St. Benedict's are all mixed ability. Um, so there, there, there aren't any setting uh, groups that we, we have. The exception to that is maths. Um, and we do set um, fairly early on in the beginning of year seven. But all of the other subjects um, are taught in mixed ability groups. Um, and we will have differentiated work that meets the needs of all learners. Before I just go on to this, one of the things that I would encourage you to do is to look at the curriculum section of the school website. On there, you will find the subjects that your son or daughter um, and you children will um, study when you arrive in Year 7, um, and you will see how, how often uh, you will study each of those subjects. Um, please do have a look. It's too much information to put on a, a single screen as part of a presentation, but it is well worth a look. Um, you will issue, be issued your individual timetables when you arrive um, in September and then you will see um, how your, your two-week um, timetable will look uh, for the first year. Now, parents, how can you support your child at home? Well, they're going to be getting um, probably an increased amount of homework on what they were expected to be able to do at primary school. Our homework expectations can be found on the website. Um, so please do have a look at those. The first thing um, that I would say in terms of how we support your son or daughter at school, there are various people that will have differing degrees of responsibility um, linked to, to your son or daughter. So if I start with the head of year, um, the head of year will be a, a point of contact um, if uh, something is, is a bit more serious. Um, before that, you have both the pastoral support and the tutors. The tutors are the person that you, uh, children, uh, will see at the beginning of every day that you are here at St. Benedict's. Um, so if you're going to draw parallels, your, your form tutor will be as similar to your class teacher has, that you've had at primary school um, as you're going to have at secondary school. Um, your tutors will then work together with the head of year to make sure that you are as supportive as possible. Um, and if you have any concerns, please do contact your form tutor throughout the course of the year, whether it's about a particular subject or not. Um, your form tutor really is, is the point of contact that we would like you to use to begin with. Um, and if you have any concerns or questions, just at anything at all, um, please do direct those to the form tutor. Above that, you then have the head of year and you will have, also have the, the pastoral support team. Now, the pastoral support team work closely with our students who have particular, particular difficulties whether that's in school or outside of school, um, and they look to make sure that anything that the student needs, we, we, that we can provide, that we do, um, to help make the students here feel comfortable, feel safe, um, and allow them to go on and do the best learning that they can. We also have mentors. Now, these are student mentors, um, and they come from both the year 10 and the sixth form that we have here at St. Benedict's. Um, they are excellent. Um, at what they do, and they form just another friendly face um, for the students here to see in the corridors, to ask questions of, um, as you're getting used to the site in the first couple of weeks, knowing where certain rooms are, these are the people that can help with that. Um, so something not particularly serious, but just asking questions about the school, um, the, the mentors really do play a key role in that process. Um, and so that's something that I would definitely take advantage of. Um, how can you help? So as I said before, the amount of homework 
um, that will be set when you arrive in September will probably go up a notch um, from what you have seen um, in primary school. Students, you will be expected to do more independent learning than you have previously been expected to do, possibly. Um, often now. <laughs> yeah, often now, yeah, that's true. Um, that is something that hopefully you're getting into the routine of doing at home currently, um, but we would expect you to do a good amount of independent learning to complement the work that you're going to do in class um, here at school. Um, to be able to do that, it is ideal if a, a quiet, studious environment can be provided as much as possible. It's not always possible, but as much as you can. Um, routine is a real key um, ingredient to have in ensuring that those good habits um, that you've worked yourself into are continued throughout the year. Um, one of the things that you need to make sure that you do begin with year seven is that you start good habits in year seven. You don't sort of take a long time to develop them and then try and switch on in year 10 and 11, perhaps at a point where it's too late. So getting into those good habits and to start off with are really, really key. Um, so work out what works for you as a family. Um, use the homework guidance that's on the website to, um, in terms of the length of time that students should be working on particular subjects and each night um, to inform how you set up that routine. Um, what it is, whether this, whether students you would, would prefer to work straight away when you get home um, and get your homework done, or whether you like a bit of a break, whatever it is, whatever works for you as families, make sure that that routine is established early on because it is really, really important um, to generating long, longer term success. Anything that you can do in terms of uh, literacy at home, um, just discuss, discussing current affairs, all of the curriculum content that you will be learning about year seven is available on our website. Um, parents, please do have a look at that. So you will see the topics that they're gonna study in history, the physical processes that they're gonna cover in geography, um, the books that they begin reading in English, um, and just talk about them. It doesn't have to be something that is formal, just a conversation over the, uh, the breakfast table um, or over dinner or when you're relaxing um, is so powerful and will have such a big impact if it's done little and often um, over the course of the time that you are here at St. Benedict's. Um, assist with revision. Um, we, we will break things down as much as possible into bits of knowledge um, that students are expected to remember. Um, that's probably the easiest way in which parents can become involved, just remembering the raw facts and figures. Do they, do, 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 does your son or daughter remember the particular formula that they need in their physics? Um, can they remember that quote in English? Um, what were those dates in history? Going over information like that, little and often, is very, very useful and a very, very um, easy way for you to contribute, uh, parents, to your educate, the education of your son or daughter. Um, in addition to that, and this is slightly more, more, more difficult to, to help with, is where they're practicing skills. Um, so the skills, being able to do them effectively, is based on the knowledge. So if we get the knowledge um, to a, 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 a good point to start off with, then the skills and practicing those skills, maybe writing an essay in English or history, solving a problem in maths, physics, or chemistry. Um, doing those types of problems um, take, take more time um, for the students, but again, you can support um, with them as much as possible. Communication with school. Um, this is something that St. Benedict's um, prides itself on. We hope that we are um, having a, uh, opening the channels of, uh, with uh, home as much as we can, um, and having that strong level of communication and a partnership between home and school is really, really crucial. Um, to make sure that all students are learning at a good pace um, and that any problems that do present themselves, and there will be problems um, and queries and questions and things like that, that they don't just remain there and, and then the learning stops. So the communication with school is probably one of the most important things that, that we can ask from you parents. If you do have questions, please do direct them to the form tutor, the head of year. If it is something that's subject specific, can be sent to the subject teacher. Um, 
But please do ask those little questions. Our staff are very, very forthcoming. They are, they are excellent and they care deeply about the students um, that they teach and they will be happy to help. Um, it's about removing those roadblocks um, to the students' learning. And if we do that quickly enough and regularly enough, um, anything, is, anything is possible. Um, so please do communicate with us as, as much as possible. Um, you will be able to find staff email addresses on our website, on our staff list. Um, so when your son or daughter arrives in September and they receive their timetable, you will see who their teachers are for all of their subjects. That's how you would communicate them communicate with them in the first instance, just send them an email. For most queries, it will be the form tutor that we direct uh, the questions to, but if it is a subject specific thing, um, it can be sent directly to the um, subject teacher. Um, that is it from me. Um, I'm very much looking forward to meeting you all year six, um, and I really look forward to September when you are going to be in your new uniform um, with your timetable out, looking a little bit lost, and I can help direct you to some excellent lessons that our teachers will be able to deliver to you. Um, I will hand back over to Mrs. Senior. You go that way. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Right, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Mr. Tatum. Um, just a couple of last things for me then before we close. Um, one of the other things that we would have done on this evening is we would have asked parents to fill in a data collection sheet. Um, and I sent out a link to that. Now I know on the letter it's, it's a real pain to have to type in all of the uh, all of the different bits on the on the how to find the form. I will send out and we'll put it onto the main school Twitter feed and onto our Facebook pages, and we'll put it back on the website as well, so that there'll be an automatic link that you can. If you haven't filled in that data collection form, it really helps us because it means that we can email you from now on rather than having to send letters. Because at the moment, because the situation is changing so very quickly, um, it makes it a lot easier for us if we can email you. To let you know that actually we can't have a meeting in school or we can't or we can do something or we could have a meeting in a particular place or a particular time so if we can have those details from you that's really really helpful um, i know that there's and there's lots of information on our website um, and i know that, that information is there in terms of where we're at and, tra and transition at present we are kind of where we would normally be it's just that we can see that the road ahead has stumbling blocks in it that we wouldn't expect to have as Mr Tatum said, we are really, really excited about the Year Sixes that are joining us. We're really looking forward to seeing you. And I know for those Year Sixes sitting at home watching this, it feels very strange probably that you haven't been in your own school for such a long time and you're already thinking about the new one and moving on there. And actually it feels all a little bit surreal and a bit strange that we're talking about a new school when the old one, you're not even in that one at the moment. But we will do everything that we can to support that. And what we also think is hugely important, and one of those things that we will do in these transition conversations with you, is we will talk about the peer groups that you have. So for you, that means thinking about friends that you may be coming to school with, and how we can support you when you come to sit, when you come to, to St. Benedict's, and how you can have those positive relationships. We don't just want to put you in a form group with all of your friends and everybody that you've already known before and just carry on primary school, because that's not the point but we don't want anybody to be lonely. We don't want anybody to feel left out. We don't want anybody to, to, to find this transition harder than it needs to be. So we will have those conversations and we will talk to you about what would be helpful for you in terms of transition. And we will try to put those things in place because we know that this is a difficult time anyway for students. And without that, that, that kind of continuity that most students would have had throughout year six, this is going to be particularly tricky at the moment. So you're doing fantastically, Year Sixes. I know you are. I hear from primary head teachers all the time how fantastically hard you're working and how brilliant you're doing at home. And congratulations to you on all of this. All of these skills that you're learning are going to be of a huge value to you when you do come to secondary school. And we know that you're going to be a fantastic part of the St Benedict's community. And we can't wait to meet you properly and not through a webcam. So um, I'm standing here staring at a webcam attached to the front of the music stand, which is all very, very strange and pretending that it's a room full of people. So we can't wait to meet you. Thank you so much for listening to us. If you have questions, please do drop us an email and we'll get back to you about those. Look at our Twitter feeds and, and our Facebook pages. There's lots of different information on there and we would love to stay in touch with you and be able to keep you as updated as possible as to what's going on with St Benedict's. So thank you so much for listening. We can't wait to meet you and see you properly. Take care, stay safe and um, Thank you very much. Come on.